Hi, good morning, and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And it's all about the FOMC last night where Janet Yellen mentioned that instead of four rate hikes, there might only be two for, uh, for 2016. And that's a bit of a backtrack from December last year when they seem to be a lot more bullish about the American economy. Not just the fact that there's going to be less potential rate hikes, there's a big question mark over if there is actually going to be any more rate hikes at all, uh, but the actual end result that they're going for is going to be lower as well. So on the back of that, the US dollar is taking a bit of a tumble equities have been moving up that little bit higher and that's been bubbling around in the background. So not a great FOMC, very, very uh, dovish in that regard. The Hawks completely lost out altogether right there. You also had the Bank of Japan, Governor Kuroda, come out uh, saying that there's not really going to be that much in the, in the way of other stimulus measures. Right now, they're negative 0.1% rates. There's, he's saying that max, if the Japanese economy continues to slide, they might have a floor of about uh, minus 0.5%, but then that's it. But of course, nobody really believes what the central bankers say right now because they say one thing a few months and then they say something completely different a few months later. So nobody really kind of takes that much stock in that regard. Also in Saudi Arabia, oil production is again back as a hot topic. We've seen a big 5% spike higher in West Texas crude overnight. Uh, Saudi Arabia is going to be having another oil conference uh, with the major players, the OPEC, and you've got Russia in there as well. And they're kind of saying, well, maybe we will just cap our own production and just ignore Iran. You know, they can do whatever they want. Uh, they obviously have a bit of an impact, but um, just to try and have that bit of stabilization for, for, for prices, obviously a war in Yemen and all the other uh, counterinsurgencies that they're doing as well and other regions uh, is an expensive business and they could actually do it themselves now with having that oil price tick up a little bit higher. So that's the background fundamentals. Let's go ahead and have a look at things from a technical perspective now as well. Okay, so this is the US there. You can see we've had a decent move higher on the back of the FOMC last night. Uh, we are now at 17,400-ish. You are going to be looking at the tips of these candles now as being the next potential support level, of resistance level, sorry, 17,981. 90% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short, uh, though this is just kind of edging higher each day that goes, goes by. It's had a very decent run since the, uh, the double bottom that we had there at uh, the end of January. So that's the uh, US 30. Moving on to the UK 100 where you've got 54% of CMC Marcus clients are currently, 53% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. You can see that move to the upside. We're struggling to break above the tips of these candles right here. So um, it looks to be around about 6,200 and change. Uh, we need to get a decent move above there and close above there before we can rechallenge 6,327. Otherwise, the, uh, the bears are going to take control again. And it already looks like, if you look at this, uh, if we even, even zoom in a little bit, you can see that we did try and hit the tip of that candle and already it's slowly drifting down that little bit lower. I'll take it this lead from the US market anyway, but we do have a sell signal in slow stochastic. We don't yet have that crossover in the MACD, but it's pretty much coming anytime soon. Moving on to the Japan 225. Um, where you have that 55% of CMC Marcus clients are currently long. Right, let me just get the, uh, the, the dollar yen up for a quick second. Uh, and then we'll go back to Japan 225. Uh, you can see there that we do have a bit of a negative turnaround right there where it's jumped that little bit higher. Then it's been pushed all the way back down on the back of Corona statements as well. 16,896 is a potential support, and that also coincides with that 55 period SMA. 55% of CMC Marks clients are currently long. Jumping back onto, uh, onto dollar yen, you can just see we've had that decent break to the opposite side. Negative rates are obviously positive for uh, the Japanese yen, more uncertainty there as well. That's what's pulling down the uh, Japan 225. Uh, 111 spot 61 is a potential support level. 75% of CMC market clients are currently long, uh, hoping that there's going to be a bounce off this level a little bit higher. I hope they're not too disappointed. Moving on to uh, West Texas crude, uh, as we mentioned, 5% gain yesterday. is propelling higher already this morning. 79% of CMC market clients are currently short. Uh, we are getting closer and closer to that psychological $40 round number on the back of the Saudi Arabian uh, aspects we were talking about. And I'm just going to put that potential resistance in at uh, 37 spot 60 because that is going to be important for the future. Moving on to... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, moving on to gold. And uh, with gold, 71% of CMC Marks clients are currently long. Really decent move yesterday in the back of Yellen's very dovish comments on interest rates. And obviously the dollar is very heavily uh, impacted by, the, uh, by interest rates. Uh, it's not had a lot of follow through already this morning. It did dip down, but then push up that little bit higher. But still, it's an interesting uh, fundamental move by gold. 
And then moving on to Euro dollar and GBP USD. So the, uh, the dollar took a back seat, took a big bath actually. The Euro is going to get accelerated up that little bit higher, fall through a little bit higher today. It's still got a break above here before we challenge one spot 14.89, uh, but a decent bounce of one spot 11 uh, is quite useful. 84% of CMC Marks clients are currently short. And if we finish up with GBP USD, uh, again, dollar weakness is the order of the day. The sterling was getting smashed. It's managed to make up a little bit of gains against the US dollar. And uh, we have a kind of a doji formation so far at one spot, 42.28. But let's be honest, the euro and the sterling isn't exactly super strong either. And it'd be interesting to see how much that uh, dollar, how long it takes for that dollar weakness to, uh, to fully work its way out. And that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. A uh, quick look at the market calendar just to finish things off. Uh, today comes with its CPI in the Eurozone, interest rate announcement from uh, the Bank of England, actually I thought that was yesterday, but it's today, employment claim data today, and then we finish up Friday with the uh, University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey, and then if we go on to Monday, it gives us existing home sales and uh, C, uh, consumer confidence in the Eurozone. Well, that's it for me guys, very good luck with your trading, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much, and goodbye.